that we're here this morning and that we can know him in a very personal way. That we can have the guilt of sin taken away. That we can be a child of God. And that is what brings us all together this morning is the fact of Jesus, his cross, and his resurrection. This time the Cole family is going to minister to us in song. The Lord bless them.
empty grave gives us the hope. Yes. Right, yes. Not just in this Out life. Truth. Out truth. But there's an eternity that we're going to spend together with right. Jesus. Yes. What made it possible and all Amen. the redeemed of all ages. Bless his name.
Thank you. Brother and Sister Paul and family for that beautiful singing this morning. We appreciate that beautiful singing, do we not? Amen. Okay. I want to make sure. Am I on here? All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, teens, for coming over this morning and able to share with us in this morning service. We're doing things just a little different. I'm going to preach, and then the choir is going to close the service out this morning. And uh, I trust the Lord will just come and help us. Stand, will you please, and let us bow our heads in prayer, asking God for direction and leadership this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you again today for this awesome privilege we have of coming into your house. We ask now that you'll help us in these next few moments. You know exactly what we need. You understand us. You realize that we are all eternity-bound people. And we need your help and your direction and your leadership. We would ask that you would come and minister to us in a wonderful way. And we'll praise and honor you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. If I'm not mistaken this morning, this is our 23rd Easter Sunday in this church. My time has gone so quickly, it doesn't seem possible that we've been in this sanctuary for 23 years. This morning, I'm going to talk to you on the cross, on the cross of Jesus Christ. You would say, preacher, well, that is a Good Friday message. Yes, I understand that. But also, I, I felt very keenly that I needed to talk to you about this because the cross was certainly important and then, of course, the resurrection. And I'm going to be looking at Matthew chapter 27 this morning. I'm not reading the scripture for the sake of time. Uh, we want to try to be on schedule, if at all possible. But we're going to be looking at the 27th chapter of Matthew. Now, often we divide humanity into many classes, rich and poor, black and white, educated or uneducated. But Jesus drew a line through all of these distinctions and he made this classification and that was either we are saved or we are unsaved. Either we are converted or we are unconverted. Either we are a sinner or we are a saint. Now I know that some of you that that know the Lord in a very personal way, you, you're a little cautious about using that word saint. And many of us realize that we can only be what we are through the blood of Jesus Christ and through His help. But there's only two classifications this morning, and that is we are either sinners or we are saints. Now in Matthew chapter 27, we are supplied with some of the details of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. There's four things that I want us to notice this morning. First of all, the path of the cross. Secondly, we want to look at the place of the cross. Thirdly, we want to look at, at the person of the cross. And last, we want to look at the purpose of the cross. First of all, the path of the cross. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be, de to be crucified. Matthew 27 and verse 26. One has said that man is sometimes like a wolf, cruel and merciless, thirsty for blood. Sometimes man is like a dog, snappish and malicious and envious and grudging as a dog is with a bone. Sometimes man is like a fox, cunning and sly. And sometimes like a bear, cruel and ugly. Sometimes like a leopard, slippery and fast. And sometimes like a snake, sly and fast as it zigzags like lightning. We see these very characteristics in the person surrounding the cross. And one of the reasons for which Christ came into the world was to give man a new nature, a new heart. A new place in right standing with God. And that was the reason that Jesus came to the cross. That man could be changed. And God's great call is unto holy living. History tells us that the days prior to the crucifixion portrayed the most beastly uh, man, uh, nature of mankind. And the pathway of Jesus grew increasingly dark. 
And the victims of this type of torture were usually chained to a pillar and the rude, barbarous men would surround the prisoner with their whips and the clothing was torn from the body and their face were pressed against the pillar. And after firmly tying the one condemned, the soldier would begin their shameful work. And the scene was dark and it was very ugly. The lashing continued until the arms and the scourgers would grow very weary, weary and weak. And then new recruits would be brought in and again over and over. The whips of that day were made of rawhide with slivers of sheep bone and huckle bone inserted. And the physical agony that Jesus Christ went through for you and I on the cross. There isn't any way this morning that I can describe that physical agony that was uh, taking place there on the cross. But even more than the agony of, of the fact of the physical was the mental agony as well. The anguish that he went through. A threadbare robe was thrown over his beaten back. And then branches were broken from the thorn tree. And were woven into a crown of thorns and pressed hard upon his head. And to complete the image of a mock king, they put in his hands a stick to resemble a kingly scepter. And then they bowed down and mocked, worshipped, and jeered him, saying, Hail the king. Some slapped him uh, about the head, while others uh, had the arrogance to actually spit in his face. And still others snatched the reed and bare, uh, bare him about the head until the, th the thorns dug deeply, dug deeply into his forehead. The gospel said, And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knees before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. Now these are some of the experiences that took Jesus to the path of the cross. But yet he was so willing to go to the cross for you and for me. Secondly, let us notice the place of the cross. Matthew writer again says, And when they came unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull, they crucified him. Golgotha. What a frightful name. Uh, when interpreted, it means the place of a skull. The word Calvary comes from the Latin meaning a skull. And the place of crucifixion was called Skull Hill. This hill was located outside the city of Jerusalem. And it was uh, uh, foreshadowed in the Old Testament in the sin offering. And Jesus was led outside the city wall and there he became the final eternal offering for sin. Golgotha was the death place. It was also a playground for the vultures and the jackals and the hyenas. And yet it was from this, from this hill that there came the hope of the whole world. And from this dark spot flows life and light and liberty. And around this hill, those of, of every color and every clime and every country can clasp their hands because Jesus was willing to go to the cross. And He was willing to go to Golgotha that men everywhere, red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in His sight. You know, we often need to say that, and I say that often around here, because if we're not careful, we think that God sent His Son just to die for us. But He didn't just die for us. He died for everywhere around the world. And that's the reason it's the opportunity, and that's the reason that it's obligation of every Christian to tell mankind that Jesus died for every man everywhere. It makes no difference the color of skin. It makes no difference the, the sin of the heart. It makes no difference the, the money in the billfold. Whatever the status may be, Jesus went to Calvary for every man everywhere. That's a great message this morning. That's a message of hope that Jesus died on the cross for all of us. The place of crucifixion was Golgotha. And thirdly, let us notice now, not only the path and the place, but let us notice the person of the cross. But who was this one so horribly treated? Who was this one who stood the scourging like a, a lamb-like patience? 
Who was this lamb among wolves? Who was this dove in the claws of the vultures? Who was this one? Who was this one who was to die a criminal's death? Friend, this one was none other than the perfect Son of God. Again, the writer said, this was heaven's bright and morning star. And in Romans chapter uh, 22 and 16, God Himself said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. In Matthew 3 and 17. Someone has said that Socrates died like a man, but Jesus died like God. Other men, when crucified, were cursed and spit upon the ones, those who drove the nails into their hands. But Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Here was the heaven's sun in eclipse and heaven's lily spotted and heaven's rose of Sharon dying and Jesus Christ was so willing to die for mankind. Thank God. Someone had said a few weeks ago when, when the discussion and when the movie came out about the passion of Jesus Christ and, and uh, thank God I believe the Lord is trying to give us revival in America I believe that He's trying to get men and women ready because He's coming back again. But someone said, how can you know a real true religion? How can you know that you're right? I think someone said it very simply when they said, because Jesus is the only one of all religions that can change your life and you can live a holy life and a separated life from the world. Jesus Christ is the answer. The first Adam was created to be a king. He was given dominion over Eden and God dressed him in a garment of glory, but he sinned. His glory changed to shame and nakedness. His crown degenerated into thorns. He became a slave to sweat and toil and sin. But the last Adam, Jesus Christ, gathered up those thorns and wove a crown for his head. He wrapped himself in the robes of mockery and died to restore lost mankind. And the God who clothed the valleys and the hills, who hears the, the raven when it calls, forsook His Son and answered not His cry. No wonder the earth rocked and reeled in protest. No wonder all of the people there on that ugly hill, beholding the things which were done, spoke their breast and returned. And, and returned. No wonder the rocks broke and the earth quaked in the view of such divine love. This was Jesus, God's only Son, dying for you and for me. He was the divine Son of God that was willing to give up all of the splendor of heaven that you and I could have full and free salvation. You say, preacher, don't get so excited about it. I don't know why I shouldn't. Because my... My, my, on his mind, on the cross was my, my very soul. He went to the cross, not for the sins of himself, but he went to the cross for the sins of me. I'm the one that openly crucified him. It was because of my sins that he went to the cross. And I'm glad he went faithfully to the cross for me. And thirdly, let us notice now the purpose of the cross. Now the cross shadows God's pointing. It shows God's uh, uh, pointing His finger at sin and saying, I hate sin. Sin is a transgression of God's law. And it must be dealt with. The Bible clearly states that the wages of sin is death. It also tells us that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Sin is not a minor discord, but a major offense. It is so major that God gave His Son to die for you and me because of sin. Oftentimes we, we begin to think, well, I'm not so bad. After all, when I look across the street at my neighbor and see all the things that he is doing, after all, I'm not so bad. I mean, my sins are just so little compared to the sins of this one or that one. And we begin to talk about this one and that one. But I want to tell you something. God sent His Son Jesus and He died on the cross for all sin. 
That's the reason this morning that we can come together and share in the resurrection because Jesus was so willing to die on the cross for my sins and your sins and all sins everywhere. And the Word speaks that God hates sin. And the Holy Spirit this morning, I trust, will bring us to the knowledge and awaken us to the fact that God hates sin. Always has, always will, and still does this morning. Now you say, but preacher, you've got to understand it. I want to tell you something. I want to clear one thing this morning. I want you to know that God hates sin. But God loves the sinner. There is no sin beyond the grace of God this morning. There is no such that you've gone so far and gone so deep. But what that blood that was shed on Calvary's cross that very day cannot avail for your sins and cleanse your heart and make you a new creature in Christ Jesus where the Word says old things pass away and behold all things become new. It's because of the cross this morning. The cross is what has made the difference in our hearts and in our lives. What was the purpose of the cross? Matthew records the, re, records the mockery of the crowd. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Absolutely true. Jesus died on the cross to redeem others, not to redeem himself. He was a man that knew no sin. He didn't partake of, of the worldly things and the sin of the day. He knew no sin. But he was willing to be the sacrifice for sin. Once and for all was willing to take the place as, as a sacrifice for you and I. That we might not have to enter into the temple anymore and offer up sacrifice. But the sacrifice through Jesus Christ was made that very day. That's the reason. That was the purpose for the cross. That Jesus might die as a supreme sacrifice for all men. Everywhere, God is just and He will never demand two payments for one debt. And while on the cross, Jesus said it is finished. What was finished? Throughout His ministry, Jesus told how that He would die for the sins of the world. And now that work and that purpose was finished. All the Old Testament offerings found fulfillment in the crucifixion. No more lambs needed to be offered. No more bullocks needed to be bound. Redemption was fulfilled. Redemption was complete as atonement was made through the shed blood of the cross that day. Isaiah said, He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Peter said, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Come choir as we close this morning. My friend, our sins, your sins, the sins of the whole world were nailed on the cross that very day. That's the reason that we can have full and free salvation That's the reason that we can know in a personal way a redemption, a redemption of all of our sins. Let me put it this way. I remember as a young boy, I remember how that I had my own plans, I had my own ways, I had my own desires, just like every man or every girl has. But I'm so glad for the time when the blessed Holy Spirit began to speak to my heart and simply say, Mark, if you'll turn your life over to you, I can make a difference in your life. <laughs> if some way you'll give me your ambitions and your desires, I can make something out of your life. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget that Sunday night as a young man. Oh yes, as a boy, as a kid. i had been to the altar many times, but I'll never forget That Sunday night at the age of 19 when I finally said that final yes to Jesus Christ and He came and forgave me of all of my sins. And what a change that made within my heart and within my life. And this is the reason this morning that I can rejoice in a risen Savior because of the cross. Listen now as the choir sings to us this morning.
years since that unforgettable day when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, hung on a Roman cross to give his life for the world. From that day forward, the world has never been quite the same. His death forever altered the course of human history. The cross is the pivot of which all the events of the ages revolve. Though the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, it was and is the power of God to those whose lives have been transformed by its message. And it's a simple message. So simple all can understand it. Its message is summed up for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 3 with these words, Christ died for our sins.
and the first earth were cast away. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, they shall be his people. God himself shall be with them, be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things will pass away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. He said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst from the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son.
they found fragrance. They expected darkness, they found light. They expected a stone, they found an open door. They expected soldiers, but they found angels. They expected to linger, they were told to make haste. They expected a dirge, they received glad tidings. They were expected to look back, they were told to look forward. They expected to see humanity, but they were greeted by divinity. They expected to embalm a body, they found a risen Savior. They expected hope to be doomed. They found eternal hope forevermore. They expected the earthly. They found the heavenly. They expected a man. They found God. And because he lives, we can live. The power of his grace can resurrect the spiritually dead and give hope to the hopeless and life to the lifeless. Only through the cross and the power of the empty tomb is the burden of sin lifted. So wherever you are, whatever you've done, no matter how far you've 
Suddenly he was conscious of a little boy who was by his side. The boy, too, was gazing. His tense expression made the man know that the crucifixion had really gripped that little boy as well. Touching the boy on the shoulder, the man said, Sonny, what's it mean? Don't you know? He answered. His face was full of marvel at the ignorance of the man. That there man is Jesus, and them there soldiers are the Roman soldiers, and that woman there are crying is Jesus' and mother. They killed him. The man didn't want to leave that picture, but he must go on his way. On down the street he went. In just a few moments, he heard the footprints of a little boy. Almost out of breath. Say, mister! Hey! I forgot to tell you something! He rose again! I'm glad this morning that Jesus Christ rose again. He went to the cross for all of us, every one of us. This morning, he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. And I want you to know you can have a personal relationship with him this morning. Let's stand together. I would like the choir to sing that last verse again. If there's someone here this morning that your life is heavy, that it seems as though your life's just going in the wrong direction, I've got some good news for you this morning. Jesus Christ is the answer. He died on the cross for all men everywhere. As the song says, Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room for you at the cross. Would there be anyone here this morning that has a heavy heart that you'd like to come? Kneel at this altar and let us pray with you this morning. Be the greatest thing that's ever happened in your life if you allow God to work with your life. Just a moment, I'm going to have Pastor 
that are here this morning that need Christ, that need to be forgiven of their sins. Help them to realize this is not a game, but it is a matter. It is a matter of life and death, of heaven and hell. Help us, Lord, to sense the urgency of the moment. Dismiss us from this service, but not from thy presence. And for all that is done, we'll be careful to give you the praise. In the name of Christ, our Lord and risen Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen.